So I've been coding for about four years now, mostly uh, in JavaScript, um, spent a lot of time in the Angular framework, but obviously like I've touched a lot of other stuff in these four years. And I wanted to create this video to just share my story, kind of like a progress update. You know, where can you get after four years of uh, software development? And for me, I was, I guess you could call self-taught. I never um, technically went to a boot camp. Um, I did go to some 30 day uh, boot camp, but it wasn't necessarily something where you had like a track laid out and there was definitely no guarantees that you were going to get a job or your money back or anything like that. So largely my journey has been self-taught and I wanted to share this because I feel like when I go online, I see a lot of promotional stuff where it doesn't necessarily tell you the behind the scenes story. Um, of, of what it might really look like once you start programming. So I wanted to learn how to code for two main reasons. The first reason was simply because I had started this WordPress website um, back in my sophomore year of college, and it was a golf website. So I played college golf, and I wanted to kind of share some of the things that I learned as a collegiate golfer and just share that with the world. So I created a WordPress website. And what happened was I started, you know, fiddling around with that WordPress website and I was reading through tutorials and they seemed so advanced and people were talking about here's how you alter the database and, you know, here's how you go into the WP admin and the actual files and all this stuff did not make any sense to me whatsoever. And I realized that by not knowing how to code, I was pretty much limiting myself to whatever plugins were available. And nowadays that's pretty you know, broad. There's a lot of WordPress plugins that you can use to um, basically be a non-technical user and get a bunch of stuff done with your website. But I didn't wanna stop there. I wanted to actually learn how to customize it. And furthermore, I wanted to know how to take my website to another level and basically you know, implement a bunch of custom things that I had as ideas in my head, but I couldn't do because I had no clue how to code. So that was the start. That was why I wanted to learn how to code in the first place. And on top of that, I was a finance major throughout college, and I thought that adding this skill set would definitely help me regardless of whether I decided to become a software engineer or just use it to you know, basically customize the site that I already had. And so in my journey after four years, some might say that no, I did not actually accomplish what I was supposed to, what I intended to. Um, but if you ask me, like I think that I got out of this so far, and I'm obviously still learning and still developing, but so far I guess what I've learned has been a little bit different from what I thought that I was going to learn. And that's kind of why I wanted to share this video. Similar to a lot of people that are trying to learn how to code, but they're not necessarily going to a boot camp, I started out with um, Harvard's CS50 course. And this course is an awesome overview of computer science, and it takes you through all of the concepts that you need to know um, in computer science. So not necessarily just coding, but like how computers work. And I got so interested in this that for the final project for the CS50 course, I picked up this book called Nanda Tetris. And this basically took you from nothing to creating a game on a computer that you created yourself. And so I thought this concept was awesome. It was super fun to do. And although, you know, it was a struggle at times where it's like a little bit dull and boring um, as you were working with very low level components of a computer, um, I found that to be an awesome experience. And it really taught me the internals, you know, the ones and zeros, the binary code and, and transistors and how you, t you know, basically turn that into an actual computer that does the things that we see today. After I completed that, I actually got signed up for a, uh, I guess you call it a boot camp, but it wasn't really uh, the full boot camp. It was called 42, which is basically, it's out in Fremont, California, and I think in Paris as well. And basically what you do is you apply, you take a test to get into what they call the piscine. And what this piscine is, I think in French, it stands for like the deep end of a pool, is they just throw you in for 30 straight days where you basically don't look up. You spend 30 straight days working from, we'll say six, seven or 8 a.m. to nine or 10 p.m. At least that's the schedule that I kind of kept. And you do that for 30 days straight and you, there's no breaks whatsoever. 
But with this um, Pacine, it's not necessarily like a, a regular coding boot camp. You don't have instructors, they just drop you in and they give you a few clues and you ultimately have to figure it out. And so during that Pacine, I wasn't necessarily guided, but I learned the C language uh, even further than what I had in the CS50 course. So I came out of that and I still didn't necessarily know how to program. Like I knew how computer science worked and I knew how to write simple C programs, but if you work with C for any extent of time, you'll know that you can't really accomplish a whole lot in a short amount of time with that language. So I ultimately had to graduate to a little bit higher level language like Python or JavaScript. So I started out in Python because this is what um, CS50 actually gets you into a little bit. And so I started out with Python and I kind of went down a, a few different paths. You know, I didn't really know what to do. Um, so I ultimately tried, you know, learning web scraping and that didn't, you know, it wasn't really that fun. Then I went down to data analysis and data science and got into the, the Python, the pandas and the matplotlib and all of those libraries. And I tried out things on Udemy and Udacity. And I took a couple courses here, but never really got a whole lot of traction. And so ultimately I started going to, you know, meetups and conferences. And I, I met someone that eventually hired me at a small software startup. And so I worked there for a year. And during that time, I picked up the Angular framework and started moving from Python over to JavaScript. And I basically spent that entire year um, behind a computer. I didn't really do much else other than that. There wasn't a lot of social stuff. Um, I was living at home at that time. And so I had a ton of time to actually just take Udemy courses and Udacity courses and, and really just immerse myself into the process. So I pretty much went an entire year of just programming. And in that year, I picked up a lot of skills um, namely, I learned Node.js, which is kind of the, the server-side JavaScript. And uh, furthermore, I kind of dived into the Angular framework and, you know, did a little bit of React stuff too, but ultimately landed back on Angular, and that's still what I do today. After about a year at the startup, you know, I wasn't getting paid a ton or anything. It was just mainly like I was helping out, start up a company, and in the process I was coding a lot was building out their infrastructure. So after that, I, I ended up quitting that job and taking a job in finance of all things, which is um, where I'm currently at after two years. And you might ask, well, you've learned how to code, so you know, what's, what, why did you get into a finance job? Why are you still there? And so this is kind of where I get into you know, the outcomes of learning to code. And although I'm in a finance job right now, I will say that you know on the side, I have a production web app that I work on um, related to that original golf website. So I pretty much accomplished that goal of being able to customize that website and even create a web app that went along with it. So I, I accomplished a goal in that sense, but I didn't necessarily you know, land that dream job that everyone talks about when you know, you hear about learning to code. And although I'm still developing and, and the future is obviously unknown, I will say that the outcome that I kind of experienced was that learning to code is not about getting a job or building a web app. It's literally about transforming the way that you think. And I can't exactly describe this in, you know, five or ten minutes, but ultimately it took my problem solving abilities from you know, what you come out of school with to uh, a pretty extraordinary level. Like, I genuinely feel that learning to code taught me how to figure out problems in general and how to think through things with um, a lot of clarity. And, you know, a lot of people know Elon Musk and he talks a lot about first principles thinking, that kind of stuff. And I really think that when you learn how to code, no matter what language you learn, um, it's going to really boil down to, you know, how are you thinking? And it's going to get you thinking from those first principles, especially if you're self-taught and, and go down the road that I did where, you know, if you run into a problem, no one's going to fix it for you. No one's going to come in and say, oh, here's how you do that. You have to basically use Google as your one and only friend. And from that, you have to figure out how to do it. So you're really on your own and it teaches you how to problem solve. 
And furthermore, like I said, I'm in a finance job and little did I know, but this whole coding experience would actually help me a ton even in that job. And so I use a lot of Excel on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, with Excel, there's VBA, so Visual Basic for Applications. And it's kind of a programming language that allows you to automate different things in Excel. And in finance, um, we pretty much primarily work in Excel. And so that has been extraordinarily helpful to me to basically take a task that would take me like three or four hours in a day and automate it down to even like a minute or two. So the side effects of learning to code for me and at this, I guess, four year mark in my journey have been slightly unintended. And the process that I went through, you know, basically teaching myself to code was, you know, to me, it felt very random. You know, I felt like I almost fell into these different spots and, you know, I'm, I'm working in Angular a lot today and that's kind of my primary framework, front end framework. Um, but I, I didn't necessarily choose that. It was kind of just, you know, these were the courses available on Udemy and people were talking about it and it was popular. And that was pretty much the only reason that I went with it. And then once you get into something and once you find a reason to keep going with it, you know, for me it was building out this golf application that I, that I currently maintain and has active users on it. Um, that was my motivation. And that's how I got into um, learning how to code and, and you know, landing in the Angular framework. It was an awesome way for me to you know, basically put all of that stuff to the test and see if I could actually you know, make something useful out of these skills. So I'll kind of cut it off here uh, for this video. Um, but that was just a, a little update, you know, kind of a progress report on what it might look like after four years of coding. I certainly did not feel like I was, you know, ready to take a job after one year of coding. But, um, you know, over the, over the next couple of years, I have felt my skills have, you know, skyrocketed. And I really feel confident behind a computer. And I not only feel confident behind a computer, but I feel confident that no matter what job I'm in, um, I can excel at. And not only that, but I can create what is in my head. I can ba basically take the ideas that I have in my head and bring them to life, which is something that I think is extremely valuable. So yeah, there's just a, just a little update on you know what, what it looks like after four years. Uh, I may create a few more videos like this if, if you find it interesting, so drop a comment below if you found this one interesting and be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for future updates.